At first sight, everything in the universe seems to follow certain rules. Planets circle the stars, and moons circle the planets, right? Well, not always. Sometimes, some of those rocks up there behave like cosmic bowling balls. Can two planets really collide? There are around 100 billion stars in the Milky Way, and an equal number of planets. Lots of those planets probably have moons. So there must be billions of worlds in our galaxy alone. Of course, the distances between them are huge. But imagine for a moment that you could observe their movements over billions of years. Some of those planets would bump into each other a few times. It's just inevitable. Planetary collisions occur in several ways. The gravity of one planet can alter the orbit of another over time. Stable planetary orbits around a star can cross over. Sometimes, several things combine to throw planets out of their star system entirely. There's a small chance that in 3 billion years, Mercury's orbit will become unstable and disrupt the entire inner solar system. Venus might smash into Earth, and Mars will be sent on an interstellar journey. Planetary collisions are most likely to happen in the first few billion years of a star system's life. Because it's still forming, a large number of objects are floating around, ready to smash into each other. There may have been 100 planets as big as Mars zooming about just after the solar system took shape. At this stage, collisions can happen frequently between two large worlds the same size. What happens in one of these cosmic accidents? Lots of different things can take place, ranging from the weird to the disastrous. A planet might lose its atmosphere and pressure. Its entire surface can be completely stripped away, along with all the rocky materials inside of it. If a small planet is hit by a larger one, it can instantly lose all of its gravitational pull. In the worst-case scenario, both planets may disintegrate completely. But if one survives, the collision can change the entire nature of a star system. When two rocky planets collide, they usually fuse to create a bigger world, like two drops of water joining together. Because of the impact, the unfortunate survivor turns into an ocean of lava for a few million years before cooling down again to become solid rock. The new, fused world could be made of entirely new kinds of rocks and chemicals. At the same time, a huge cloud of debris blooms above the molten planet. All that material will eventually clump together to create new moons. Often it creates one large satellite that orbits close to the fused world, and a few smaller ones that circle much farther out. But if a rocky world hits a gas giant, the results can be a bit different. We know that Jupiter has a very strong gravity, so it's quite likely that it pulled a smaller but still very large planet towards itself during its early existence. The experts have a few theories about what happened. If it was a direct collision, the smaller world probably pierced Jupiter's atmosphere like an arrow. It slammed into the gas giant's core. The chemicals inside Jupiter became all mixed up between the core and the atmosphere. But overall, Jupiter swallowed the smaller planet without too much damage. But if the little world only grazed the gas giant rather than hit it directly, it might have become trapped and gradually disintegrated in Jupiter's atmosphere. Unsurprisingly, in either case, the smaller world came off a lot worse. But a rocky planet's collision with a gas giant still leaves its mark. For instance, Uranus orbits the Sun lying on its side at a 90-degree angle compared to other planets. Scientists think Uranus ended up like this after it was literally bowled over by an object about twice as big as Earth. Have there been other planetary collisions? Our Moon may have appeared 4.5 billion years ago when the young Earth was hit by a planet about the size of Mars. Scientists call this lost world Thahia. They used to think Thahia only glanced the Earth. But some now say the two planets hit each other head-on. Thahia instantly turned into lava and then merged with the Earth to become one big molten lump. The dust and material that flew up into space eventually created the Moon. So we could be standing right now on a mixture of two different planets. There's another, even crazier theory about what happened, though. The Earth-Thea collision may have involved a much larger amount of energy than previously thought. This could have completely destroyed both worlds. 
there was nothing left but a cloud of vapor. This became thicker and cooler over time to eventually form an entire new Earth and its satellite. The same thing happened to Mars. For a long time, experts thought Mars' two moons, Phobos and Deimos, were just asteroids that had wandered too close to the red planet. They got sucked in by its gravity, ending up in orbits around it. But captured asteroids often have very strange stretched-out orbits far from the planet that caught them. Phobos and Deimos are very close to Mars and have almost perfect circular orbits. This is often a telltale sign that the object formed from a disk of dust and rocks that used to circle the planet. The chances are that Phobos and Deimos appeared in much the same way as our own moon. Something massive hit the young Mars, and the cloud of dust then clumped together to form the two rocks. The far-off world of Pluto has one really big moon called Charon and four smaller satellites. All of them have near-perfect circular orbits. That's a pattern identical to Mars and Earth. So Pluto also had an explosive encounter with another big rock billions of years ago. With Mercury, the situation may have been a little different, although no less dramatic. The little gray world has a thin crust and large planetary core. This has led some scientists to think it may have once experienced a huge impact that tore off several layers of the planet. The layers are the rocky materials that are often packed in between the planet's core and its surface. Mercury, so the theory goes, got peeled like an onion. On the other hand, Venus doesn't have a single moon. While it's taken its fair share of hits from asteroids, it seems nothing really big ever came its way. So ultimately, with planetary collisions, it all comes down to luck. I'm guessing some planets are singing, if it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Yeah. <laughs>